Hi, it's Paul Hill from ITFleet.com, and in this lesson, you are going to learn how to create and manage user accounts within Active Directory users and computers. This is the most common task that you will need to fully understand if you want to have a successful career as a Windows Server Administrator. So if you want to work in the IT field as a help desk professional, a system administrator, server administrator, or a support specialist, you have to understand how to create user accounts and manage them. So make sure that you pay attention if that's your goal. This is an important, important lesson. Now, when it comes to creating and managing user accounts, you really have two options. The first is to use the Active Directory Users and Computers Console, or secondly, you can use the PowerShell command line. Nine out of 10 administrators prefer the Active Directory Users and Computers Console because it's just easy. It's, it has a graphical user interface. You can right click, you can uh, type stuff in. You have an interface to walk you through things instead of just typing in commands. Now, in this lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Active Directory Users and Computers Console. Now, the way you can access that is by logging into your domain controller. And over here on the top right, we're going to select Tools and then Active Directory Users and Computers. We can see it here. It's about the fifth or sixth one down. So if we select this, we'll have Active Directory pop up. Okay. Now, if I expand my domain, we can see that I don't really have any kind of structure set up, just the default organizational units and containers. So if you're at your workplace, if you already have a structure set up, you should go with what you have. If you're following along in this lesson, then what we're going to do is create our own structure. So I'm going to pretend like we work for a company called IT Flea. So the first thing I'm going to do is make an organizational unit called IT Flea. So I'm going to right click on the root domain and we're going to choose new and we're going to choose organizational unit. And I'm going to call this IT Flea. We'll click OK. And then inside of this, I want to have an administrators OU where I can put all my domain administrators. And then I want to have a users OU where I can put all of my users, people who just work on the computers or just need to log in, but don't necessarily need to make administrative changes on the computers. So I'll right click on the IT fleet and I'll choose new and we're going to say organizational unit. And I'm going to type administrators as the first and I'll click OK. And then we'll do the same thing again, right click on IT Flea, choose new, and we're going to select organizational unit, and we'll make one for just users. So we'll just call this domain users. Hit OK. Okay, now we have some kind of structure within our domain. Of course, this type of designing is entirely up to you, and how you want to organize your Active Directory objects is your decision. And you might decide to put both administrators and regular users in the same OU, or you might decide to put them in separate OUs like I did. What I'm going to do is create a new user account for myself under the administrators OU because I want myself to be an admin since I am an admin. So I'm going to right click on this administrators OU and we'll choose new and we're going to choose user. So far we've been using the administrator account that was set up by default on the server. Now this practice is generally frowned upon in the security world as shared user accounts are considered a bad practice. Because if, so, if say if you have five administrators and they're all using the same account, if one person deletes a file or steals a file and you look in the logs and everyone's using the same account, it's gonna be hard to tell who actually completed the change or, the, or whatever the case was. It's better to create new user accounts and only use the administrator, the default administrator account as a backup. So I'm gonna enter in my first name. Now press tab and tab again, enter my last name, Pressing the tab key helps you quickly navigate these wizards. So I'll just press tab. And for the user logon name, I'm going to type in paul.hill. You'll notice there's a separate logon for pre Windows 2000. Now this field adapts your user logon name to a format that is acceptable by older server operating systems, anything before Windows 2000. For example, if your user logon name was longer than 20 characters, it'll be truncated in the Windows 2000 logon name. Okay, so if we had 25 characters up here, it only show the first 20 down here. All right, so we're going to click next. And on the next screen, we're asked to set up our user's password. Now I'm going to enter the password that I want to use for my account. Let's just type that in. See if I can type it in right. Okay, so I'll type it in again to confirm it. And then what I'm going to do, since I'm creating this account for myself, I'm going to uncheck the user must change the password at the next logon. Generally, how a new account creation works is that you will create the account with an Active Directory using a temporary password, something like password one or whatever you decide to use that's hopefully a little more complex than password one. Once you create that account, you will provide the new user, the person who's gonna be using the account, the username and their temporary password. 
Since we're creating the user account for ourselves, we do not need to use a temporary password and we will not want to change it once we log in. So I'm gonna enter the password I actually wanna use right here. And uh, by the way, I'm just making it the same as the ad administrator account just to keep things simple. When I'm using these home labs, I like to just use the same password for everything. That way I don't have to worry about forgetting anything or something silly like that. Now, if we check this user cannot change password option box, just like it sounds, it will not allow the user to change password. Now this is useful for service accounts when you're not using an MSA like we talked about before. Uh, but nine times out of 10, you're not gonna need to check this particular checkbox. Uh, it obviously makes your account less secure. So if security is a concern at all, do not check this checkbox. The password never expires checkbox is also useful if you're creating a service account and not using an MSA. Basically, if you're creating the account with this user interface and you know it's gonna be a service account and it's gonna be used by you know an application and not an actual real person. Now, some people do wanna check this on their own accounts so that they don't have to change the password every 90 days or whatever the policies are for your workplace. Again, if security is a concern at all at your workplace, you do not wanna check this checkbox. The account is disabled checkbox is a good way to create an account for future use that is not ready to be used yet. So for example, if you're working in a classroom environment and you know you have students coming in and they're gonna to need to be able to log into the computers, you might create the account two weeks ahead of time and just check this checkbox and make sure the account is disabled so that it cannot be used until they get there. And of course, when they arrive and they're trying to log in, you'll need to come back and uncheck this checkbox so that the account is enabled and it's able to be used. All right, so what we're gonna do now is just click next and click finish. And we can see that the account has been created. Now, first thing we're gonna do, since this is supposed to be an administrator account, at this point, we can see the type, it's just a regular user. So if we double click on the object here, we can go to the member of tab. And we can see that it's just part of the domain users. Now to make this account a domain administrator, we need to add the domain admins membership. And the way you do that is by clicking on the add button. Now we just need to type in domain admins and then we'll click check names. And we can see that it underlined the name here so we can tell that it found it. So if we click okay, we can see that this is now a domain admin user. Now we could set this to the primary group, but we can see here there's no need to change the primary group unless you're using Macintosh clients, which we're not using. So just click okay and leave it just fine like that. Okay, so now we have our user account created. Now one thing I wanna show you is how to search and find users or any type of object within Active Directory. We talked about this a bit in the past, but I'm gonna demonstrate it to you since we're talking about creating and managing user accounts. Now, every once in a while you'll get you know, you'll need to pull up a certain user and you'll just get a first name and a last name. And in our domain, it would be pretty simple to find because we know we can go under IT Flea and we can either look in domain users or administrators. And some companies have hundreds of OUs and thousands of users, so it's not that simple. So what you need to do is click this little search button at the top where it says find objects in Active Directory domain services. And what we would need to do is choose users, contacts, and groups, and then under the N, box, we're going to search entire directory, and we're going to type in the name of the person. So if we're searching for Paul Hill, you can see that it popped up with my account. Now, nine times out of 10, that's how you're going to find a user account. If you're looking for one, you could also go into the advanced and search under fields um, for the particular user, like division, email address, fax number, say if they're not coming up uh, with their username or their first and last name, but you happen to know their email address, you could go here into user you could type in email address and say, you know, it's paul.hill at itfleet.com. And you could search for it that way. You could also do, uh, you could also do employee ID. So there's other ways to search, but nine times out of 10, you don't need to go into this advanced field. Just typing in their name will be good enough. Okay. Now, a lot of times when you're searching for users like this, the reason why you'll be doing it is to either unlock their account or reset their password. And I can't talk to you about creating and managing user accounts in Active Directory without telling you about resetting passwords. It's really simple, but I just want to run you through it. So what you do, once you find the user account that you're looking for, you know, if, if I called in and say, hey, my name is Paul Hill, I need you to reset my password and I think I locked my account out. This is what you would do. You say, okay, I'm going to find you. So you go up here and click find objects in Active Directory domain services. And we will type in, first we'll change this to entire directory. And we will search for Paul Hill. The reason why we choose entire directory is the most broad search you can do. We could just do the domain if you knew that information. If you didn't have any idea, you just choose entire directory. 
Once you find the user account, you right click and choose reset password. Now this is the same as that second window when we created the new user account. We have an unlock the account and we have user must change password at next logon. An important thing to keep in mind here is the account lockout status on this domain controller. And we can see that my account is unlocked. If the account was locked, you'd wanna check this checkbox down here. Since it's unlocked, there's no need to do it, but it doesn't hurt to go ahead and check it anyway. Now we can create a new password, like password one, two, three, four, and you know, with some exclamation marks and things like that. And we would want the user to change the password at the next logon, and then you would just click okay. I can just do this for demonstration purposes. So if I just create a new password here, we can see that uh, if I just click okay, password for Paul has been changed. So you would just give that password back to them. And sometimes they don't even know what their username is. So the way that you get that is just double click on the account and go over here to account. And you can see user logon name is listed there. Okay. So that's how you would find a user account and reset the password. I'm telling you, password resets are like one of the most common things that happen when you're working on a domain controller or you're administrating a network, especially if you have a lot of users. Uh, password resets keep you in business and keep you busy. So, so one last thing that we could do is go under the users container and we can find the domain administrators. All right, now this is a security group. If you remember, when we created our new user account, we added them to this group. So if we double click on this group and we choose members, we can see that Paul Hill is a member of the domain admins group, okay? What I'm gonna do now is log into that paul.hill user account that we just reset the password on and demonstrate what happens when you're prompted to reset the password or when you check that checkbox that says user must change password at the logon. So I'm gonna click on this Windows button, we're gonna choose the administrator and we're gonna say sign out. I'm gonna hit right control and delete and over here on other user, choose other user and I'm gonna say paul.hill. Should I spell that right? And I'll type in my password. And we'll press enter. And here we can say user's password must be changed before signing in. So now I'm forced to create a new password and I'm not allowed to use that temporary password that was issued by the administrator. And we'll click the next arrow. Oh, and it's saying the value provided for the new password does not meet the length complexity or history requirements. All right. So now I have to type in that temporary password again. And I'm going to type in a more secure password because I love to use my non-secure passwords. I'll press enter and now it is changing the password, okay? Your password has been changed, hit okay, and now it will load my desktop. All right, so now I'm logged in as paul.hill and I'm a domain administrator, and that is how you manage user accounts. And what we've covered is creating user accounts, adding them to groups. We did the domain administrators group, and we learned how to search for users and reset user passwords, okay? So I hope you found this lesson useful. You're gonna be doing this all the time, especially if you work in the help desk field or even as a system administrator. If you're the go-to Active Directory guy, you're gonna have to know how to do this. This is just, you cannot get away without understanding how to do this. So I hope you found this useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.